Good morning and welcome to our webinar uh, on how to keep your mental health in the current situation. As the First Minister said, life is going to change significantly and I think for most of us it already has as we juggle working from home, trying to maintain a reasonable work-life balance, homeschooling and everything else that has come with the current situation. We're delighted to have three people here today um, who can all share a wealth of experience and expertise on how we can make sure that we're looking after ourselves um, in the current situation. I would like to welcome Stu Hurst from Just Eat, um, Scott Newby from Newby Core, and Marjorie McBain from Gravitate HR. We're going to open the floor now. We're happy to take questions. Please use the Q&A panel on Zoom. Um, and we can filter some questions through in between each speaker and then have time at the end for a few more. So without further ado, I would like to hand over to Stu. Thanks, Jane. Um, thanks everyone for joining and for Scotland AS for, for having me. Um, I've been lucky enough to, to do some stuff for Scotland AS uh, a little bit over the last few years, including the, the, um, uh, the expo, uh, which is great. Um, so, I mean, first off, apologies, like a lot of you, I have a cough at the moment, um, so self-isolating and apologies if I splutter my way through, through some of this. Um, I know we're all, all struggling a little bit. Um, I, I suppose I wanted to give a bit of a rundown of um, <clears throat> my, not so much my background, but how I've transitioned into a remote working role over the years. Um, so I, I'm currently working for, for Just Eat and I, I'm, I'm almost fully remote in, in this role as principal cloud security engineer. Uh, I head up a team of five people for the group across uh, numerous uh, countries and time zones. Um, and I, I've been over uh, 20 years in IT in, in general for numerous companies and numerous uh, sectors. I moved into uh, InfoSec in about 2011. So my, my roles over the last uh, nine years or so have been uh, cyber security related. Um, I suppose I started briefly working from home uh, with RBS about 15 years ago when, when I was on call back in the days when it was dial up modems and it would take 20 minutes to uh, dial into a network um obviously much much easier these days compared to then so um I, you know i had my first kind of taste of, of working from home um probably that that far back um and then when i worked for the train line in 2011 and 12 i, I started really doing occasional full days um uh, compared to maybe just ad, ad hoc things um and then it was really when i worked for Skyscanner and um, my wife and I had our, our first child and I I made a call um, to do two days uh, a week at, at home <coughs> excuse me um, and they had a great culture where you know there was a no permissions culture so I didn't even really have to ask to do that and the and the tech was great um, but that, that that was you know I, I really moved into more of a working from home ethos back then um, Historically, I didn't have the best of uh, working from home setups, kitchen tables, um, you know, parts of the house that are perhaps not as isolated or easy to work from, which has definitely been a learning curve. Um, and, and then I've spent the last few years in roles where I've traveled quite extensively. So I've got used to working on trains and in airports and hotel rooms and uh, places that are, that are not offices. Um, so now my role with Just Eat at the moment, I'm about 90% at home. I get to London occasionally or did <laughs> until this, this craziness. Um, and generally only for specific reasons, actually. So workshops or um, catching up with the team. Um, what I have now is I have a proper office at home. And again, I'm, I'm very lucky to be able to do that. I, I, I moved back to Edinburgh five years ago and, and bought a house and I'm able to have a room here, which is um, which is my office. I understand that that's you know, not everybody has that um, to be able to do that. Um, I manage four people across London, uh, York and, and Canada. Um, I'm actually very vocal at work in, in, in lots of different ways, and I'll explain some of this when I go on to the, um, uh, the benefits of working from home or difficulties sometimes as well. So when people see me in the office, a lot of them don't realize that I'm a remote worker, uh, which I think is, is good. Uh, it, it shows that I'm kind of putting myself out there a little bit. Um, and fundamentally now, compared to maybe in my <laughs> much earlier career, I have a very good work ethic, so it doesn't really matter where I am. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm productive and... Uh, I love my job and I want to succeed uh, in it. So, um, you know, working from home for me is, is not a, uh, an easy an easy day. <laughs> you know, this is this is my my job. Um, so, I mean, what, what's easy 
really and, and what do I enjoy about working from home? So from a company point of view, for, uh, again, I'm very lucky. I work for a tech company uh, that, that, that is culturally awesome. Um, and fundamentally, the, the tech stack that we have just works. So you know, we use Slack, we use Google Hangouts, um, Jira, Trello, those kind of things. We minimize that stack as best we can. So we're not all running off and using different tools. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're, um, you know, we've got a solid base of tech that we, that we use and they're, they're really important for me to connect with people on a day-to-day -day basis and define the work that we're doing and track the work that we're doing. Um, we have a brilliant tech support team who uh, respond on Slack within minutes, regardless of where you are in the world, uh, which is great. And we're a global company anyway, dealing with different offices and time zones. Um, so me being here in Edinburgh, not in an office, just only feels like an extension of um, a global company anyway. Um, so what do I enjoy working from home uh, on, a, on a personal level? Uh, I'm sure many will uh, empathize with this. I mean, simply, I get to see my kids every day. Um, I start work at around half seven, but it's at the breakfast table with my two little, little kids. Um, I get time with, the, you know, with my eldest to get ready for play group, and I get to play with them both. Um, I get to have dinner with them um, every, every night and do the nighttime routine of, of bath times and bedtimes. Um, I can't imagine being in an office every day where perhaps I'd be leaving the house before I could get to do any of that and then not getting home um, before bedtime. So that, that for me personally has been, has been awesome. <coughs> um, I, I fundamentally get to define what my working day looks like. Um, uh, silly things like I've locked out 90 minutes before to take my toddler to a trampoline park near us. Um, I just wouldn't get to do that if I was in an office. Um, I've been able to go to doctor's appointments, inoculations for the kids, um, pick them up from play group. Again, that, that flexibility of being at home and having, you know, being able to tweak my day-to-day my -day diary to cater for some of those things, I think is a really, a really powerful thing. Um, I get to exercise more as I'm not traveling as much. Uh, I don't do a daily commute, so um, I get to do that. For me, exercise, I, I talk quite publicly about this, is a massive help for me in terms of mental health. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a huge thing to, to help if, if you're into that. Um, you know, difficult at the moment in the current circumstances, uh, but, but certainly something for me that I invest a bit of time in. Uh, I obviously save money and time not commuting, which is big, a big bonus. Um, I get to live in my home city, despite my accent, this is my home city, um, my amazing home city, and I work for a great company, but I live, I live here where they don't have an office. Um, and, I, and I guess I can technically work from anywhere. Uh, coffee shops. I've even worked in Brewdog, <laughs> where they have um, you, can, you can hire desks there um, and, and have unlimited coffee, and just be somewhere else. You know, just get get yourself out of the house. Um, so that they're the kind of positives for me, and there, there's many more, but they're the ones that stood out. But but what's difficult, and there are some difficulties of working from home. It's it, it's it's not um, it's not all awesome all the time. So. Um, with for fear of contradicting myself here about the kids, um, being around kids all the time can be difficult. I don't have that separation as much as I might might like at times. So I can hear what's going on downstairs, even though I'm in a, a room upstairs. Uh, I hear when the toddler hurts herself. Um, she's quite good at understanding that I'm at work, but she'll still come up and uh, chap the door or, or I hear her shouting sometimes. So um, yeah, trying to articulate to young children that you're actually at work and, and not really um, able to to mix with them can be can be difficult even just an hour ago she was asking me to read her a story and I couldn't because I was about to go into a meeting um, that can be difficult um, yeah I, I mean I have to be really blunt about me being at work and that's not just to my kids but you know to my, to my wife and um, you know I, I'm not available to, to get involved in the <laughs> the, the niff-naff and trivia of, of, of being in the house all day you know I'm at work this is my job um, you know, in case something crazy happens, I'm, I'm not available to come down the stairs and do things. Um, I find that I sometimes get to a Friday and realize I haven't left the house, um, which is ironic given the position we're in at the moment. Um, I sometimes I have to force myself to, to get out and about, even if it's just going for a coffee or, or pop into the supermarket or something. Um, even more important at the moment that we're able to, to do that with the, you know, the, the guidelines that we've been given. Um, it can be hard to switch off. I found when I worked in an office that the ability to sort of hit half past five and then that's you, you know, because you have to go and get your, your transport or whatever. Um, I find that tricky sometimes and I do dip into work at times I probably shouldn't. Um, that, that can be difficult. Um, 
especially at nighttime when the kids have gone to bed, I sometimes, you know, check Slack and things because we have a, a Canadian team that will still be working at that time. Um, I actually cook dinners most nights at home for the very reason that it gives me that separation and it gives me that time to say, right, now I have to stop work now because I'm off to, uh, to cook dinner. Um, and I, I absolutely miss office banter. I'm a, I'm a social person anyway. And um, you can try and recreate that online as much as possible, but it's, it's not the same. Um, so when I do get to London, I take the guys out for a coffee or a beer or, or something, just to have that, that connection. Um, so how, how do I make this easier? How do I make working from home fundamentally easier? Um, I have a proper working space. It's my office, as you can sort of probably see behind me. Uh, I go to it. I stay in it. This is my working day. Um, I still have routine as much as possible, even though there's a flexibility with, uh, with, with my working day. Uh, I have a proper desk and chair. I have two whiteboards um, behind this laptop that you, that you can't see and pens and paper and sticky notes and all the things that you would uh, sort of expect in an office. Um, I've branded my office space. So again, two things you can't see here. I've got two posters of the company logo and it just helps reinforce that I'm in a working environment. Uh, I also wear company hoodies, um, which I do anyway, but again, it just, I feel I'm at work here rather than, um, you know, some, somewhere else. So it just reinforces that sense of being at work. Um, a really important piece of advice I could give anybody, and there's been some quite funny chat online the last week or two while we've been in lockdown of, um, it's really important to get dressed. Um, if you sit in your pajamas all day, you might not quite be in the headspace to, to do work. I know it's easy to do, roll out of bed, you know, um, not, not maybe do the things that you would, you would normally do, but I find it really important and I, I structure my day to, uh, to do that. Um, I check in with the team first thing every morning. We actually all do that regardless of whether we're in an office. So just make sure everyone's okay and uh, nothing crazy's happened overnight. Uh, I definitely overshare information uh, just in general on Slack. Um, and I have anything from five to 10 online conversations a day. Don't know if you can see behind me, but I moved an exercise bike into my office room. Again, not, not the easiest thing for everybody to be able to do, but um, anytime we have all hands where I don't have to speak and nobody has to see me, then I jump on the bike, uh, which is good. So I get, get that bit of exercise. Um, I work in fairly short bursts. So I do maybe 40 to 50 minutes at a time. And then I go and have a drink or coffee or stretch my legs, which I guess is no different to, uh, to an office really. Uh, I definitely document a lot more as well. Uh, we have a wiki uh, and we, we get a hell of a lot of information on that to share with people. Um, so how do I, I manage a team of, of four, four people, four brilliant guys and split across those locations. And it's been a real learning curve for me to, um, to manage a team remotely. So we have a hell of a lot of trust in our company anyway, but I work with wonderful guys that we all trust each other and it's not really a hierarchical thing. Uh, we, we all make use of the applications we've got and we, uh, we trust each other to do the, the, the work that we're doing. Um, I have weekly or fortnightly one-to-ones with the team. Uh, everything's about collaboration, even though we're split across time zones. Um, I manage another remote worker actually, uh, and I've been really, really focused on ensuring he has everything he needs to get up to speed, feel comfortable in the role. Uh, and again, just oversharing info at any, any point. Um, I still value speaking to people rather than Slack. I mean, sometimes, um, conversation can be misunderstood or, uh, I find that humor can be misunderstood on, on mes messaging systems. So sometimes it's just easier to speak to people. Um, so it's just it's just finding that balance really. Um, so so just just to kind of leave you with um, with a few things here on. I wanted to touch on the COVID nineteen thing that's, that's going on and really start by saying this is not normal for any of us. Uh, I work from home a lot, but you know that this is this is a struggle for a lot of us. Um, and a lot of the coping mechanisms that we would normally have just aren't available just now. So um, on a company level, we've gone fully remote around the globe in a matter of weeks actually, which which is incredible. Um, we have daily virtual coffees where for the team where we just talk garbage really and it's um it's not work related um we're not working traditional nine to fives again we're lucky to do that but we work when we can um and try and fit that around our um our family lives uh, weekly virtual drinks what we do on a friday getting everyone together and just have a bit of a um let the hair down we have an open water cooler hangout where people can just jump on for a chat about anything which is, which is cool. Um, and then we, the, the company are great for lots of mental health support and mindfulness apps. Uh, we have one-to-one -one counseling that's available. So these, these are all really important uh, things. Um, and then I guess on a personal level, um, this is crazy, right? So there's no playbook for any of this. And I think we're all feeling our way through, through what this, this is and we're all having good days and bad days. Um, it's never been more important 
to me to communicate because isolation can, can certainly be, be tricky. So for me, this is the overriding theme is family first. Uh, the, the, these are jobs at the end of the day. Um, family, family comes first for me. Um, I'm spending a lot more time making sure my team and colleagues are okay. There's lots of one-to-one -one conversations happening where we're just making sure that we're, we're okay and that we've got what we need. Um, I'm definitely separating work from personal life a lot more, putting my phone down a lot more, uh, switching off as, as much as I can, um, taking the right breaks and exercising, as I mentioned. Um, I got out for the first time yesterday in 11 days because I've been self-isolating and it was actually phenomenal <laughs> just to get out and, and be somewhere else and walk somewhere else. Um, I think we're a little less focused on output at the moment and just focused on getting the right work done at the right time as best we can. Uh, you know, the whole world's turned upside down and we're not quite sure when it's going to return to normal. Um, you probably can't see it. I dug out my decks and my mixer, which I haven't used for 10 years, and I'm doing online mixes and things for people just to try and generate some fun. Um, and I think I've reconnected with friends again that, I, that, that we, in, in a way that we hadn't before. So our WhatsApp group is, is crazy at the moment, and we're doing you know, virtual Saturday night pub things and, and just trying to have it embed a bit of fun where it can be difficult when you're cooped up uh, indoors. Um, so just, just to leave you um, with, with one of the best comments that I've seen um, about remote working and that it's, it's a process. Um, you don't become a remote worker overnight. Uh, it takes a real amount of adjustment and, uh, and learning. You, you, you know, there are, there are a huge amount of upsides and I'm very passionate about remote working now, but um, there's also some things to maneuver. So um, yeah, thank you. Happy for any questions, by the way, whenever we, whenever we do them. Thank you. I'll keep an eye on questions coming in. Um, I think that's a really good point that none of this is normal. It's not normal home working. And however people are feeling in reaction to this, whether it's anxious or angry or upset at random times of the day, is all very normal. And it's, it, it's part of the process of working through that. I'm going to hand over now to our next guest. I'm delighted to welcome Marjorie McBain. Hi there. Um, I hope I'm. I hope you can hear me all. Um, yeah. Uh, so um, my name is Marjorie McBain. I am managing director of Gravity HR, a small outsourced HR um, company which I started uh, 15 years ago. And interestingly, we were very office-based, office-focused. We um, really valued being able to spend time together. And we have two offices, one in Glasgow and one in Edinburgh. And we've hung on to that and, uh, because we work very collaboratively together to solve problems on behalf of clients. Back in December, for some reason, I decided to uh, buy a new stack of laptops and in January I decommissioned our service and put a server and put everything onto the cloud and uh, some few weeks later um, I was very uh, aware of a degree of anxiousness amongst the team as they were worried about travelling into the office and within 24 hours we locked down the two offices and we moved to moving from home. And we did that successfully over a weekend and one day. Um, uh, and I was really surprised at actually how easy it was, given that we were so office centric. Uh, part of the reason why we probably adjusted to it very quickly was that our clients were then facing some uh, very difficult decisions in relation to the employee employment of their employees and to be honest for three weeks we have been as busy as we ever have been reaching out to our retained clients helping them to make decisions about uh, that word that nobody ever knew furlough uh, and now what we don't know about furlough and uh, its implications how it can be applied how it affects holidays and second all sorts of stuff um, the team have been furloughed out, to be honest. Um, so as a, as a business, um, from a client perspective, we've actually been incredibly busy. How long that will continue, we will wait to see. Um, so my job has been very much about making sure that the, the teams are able to deliver to the clients. Um, we, uh, we, we meet on a Teams meeting at 9.15 every morning and again at four o'clock in the afternoon and that way we can keep um, workflow going etc and we can also support each other because we are a very close team. 
um, uh, and actually has brought the two offices closer because we're all on the same Teams uh, platform in the morning and in the afternoon. And a bit like Stu um, on the Friday four o'clock meeting, that's a, a social with a, a beer or a glass of wine and some nibbles. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, for employers, um, your duty of care in terms of being an employer of people working from home. Um, as an employer, you have a duty of care to the well-being and mental well-being of your, of your employees. And that duty of care remains whether they're in your office or whether they're working from home. Um, and therefore, it is important that not only are you making sure that the work that you need to have done is being done, but that the way in which that your, your team members are engaging, the workspaces that they're in, their ability to communicate, the technology that they have, you have some form of responsibility to make sure that they can actually carry out their work. Um, and one of the, th we've had to change all sorts of things about the way that we do. We um, are in the process of actually um, amending our normal workplace stress risk assessment so that we can focus that um, for, to um, a working from home stress risk assessment that can either be used as a self-diagnosis or could be used by a line manager to talk through with a member of their team about where the stressors might be coming from and then being able to work through um, possible solutions. Um, a bit like Stu, I think there is no rule book in all of this. And for the first time ever, we're all facing the same level of uncertainties. We're all in this together. And therefore, my approach has been very much, what can we do to help each other? Because the more we can support each other and, and provide the right kind of help and advice, actually, it's the companies who have taken that um, collaborative and supportive that I think will be much stronger coming out the other side of this and potentially will have a, a better business and a better business model on the other side of this. Um, and I have encouraged my team, even where we've got clients who are really, really struggling just now, um, to be able to come up with a way that we can support them um, and help them to be able to make sure that they've, they've still, still got a, a, a business. Um, so as a, as a business owner, I've got, I've got two or three hats on just now. I'm busy working with our accountants in terms of making sure we're looking after our finances and our cash flow to make sure that there is something at the other end and I can look after my team. I'm working hard looking after our clients and making sure that they've got the right kind of advice and that advice and information um, is unfolding on a daily and sometimes hourly uh, basis and in order to keep up with that making sure that the team are really engaged and making sure that they're focused and in actual fact I found that um, that is what helps them stay seen almost because it gives them a focus it gives them something to do and it gives them a real meaning that they feel that they're helping and that they're contributing but I've got to say some of the issues that we have to deal with um, which has been closure of companies bringing back um, uh, employees um, from from uh, abroad um, one company that had gone bust and they couldn't even afford to pay for their employees to get on a plane and come back and um, having to deliver that message. People who are on maternity leave who were having to end their employment. You know, some of these um, messages are really, really tough. And I hate to say this, but it is, it is the reality. We are also having to deal with um, not very many, but a few death and service uh, situations as well. So uh, it, the team are dealing with stuff that they've never had to do, um, but actually because they know that it's, it's, it's meaningful and it's wanted and it's helpful, they're actually really knuckling down and, and getting on with that. And I'm incredibly proud of them being able to do that. Um, and I do think that come the other side of this, um, 
we will be we will be stronger i think we will learn to work in better more collaborative we won't all be stuck in our little offices uh, we will be more agile we'll be more flexible and I, and I do think eventually that will feed through to some of the legislation that underpins um, our, our employment. Um, we ha it's interesting, you know, HR is very process driven and yet uh, we've, we've gone, well, what is actually reasonable? You know, it isn't reasonable for an employer to, to, to wait uh, a 12 week notice period before they can implement a decision. Um, it is reasonable to go through some communication and some consultation with our employees and to decide mutually as to when that decision can then be implemented. So taking very pragmatic and reasonable interpretation of contractual terms, um, actually communication and consultation is incredibly important just now, um, making sure that employees understand because everybody's feeling that uncertainty on on so many different levels not only what's going to happen at a political economic and social level but what's going to happen to their employment are they going to be furloughed are they going to be made redundant are they going to have to take a pay cut will there be a job that comes back to you so for for, for the managers and ceos and managing directors out there my message to you is Communication and consultation is never more important than just now. Actually make sure that you have clarity in your message and that you reach out and make sure that people, for however much you can, but you give them that level of information and help them to reduce whatever uncertainty that they possibly can and also to, for them to be able to make decisions. There are different ways in which we can cut this up. There are different ways that the employment can continue. And, and if you're uncertain, you know, reach out and get some advice because uh, furlough is not the only option. Um, all I'd say, I want to make sure everybody else has got plenty of time. Um, I am actually got to leave this call slightly early because I'm doing my own webinar in a wee while. So, I didn't know whether maybe if there was any specific questions, uh, Jane, anybody wanted to ask me before I maybe need to leave the call. We've got a couple of questions in just now. Um, one around, uh, and I think we've actually partially answered this with, with that looking forward piece, but do you think more employees and employers will be interested in increased remote working after COVID-19? I think absolutely, definitely. But I think I think um, we will be much better at doing it. And I think there have been a lot of employers who have been reluctant and somewhat scared to go down that route because it comes back to a point that Stu made. A lot of it relies upon trust and confidence that the person who's sitting at home is actually going to do the work that you're asking them to do. And um, I think we will learn much better ways in which we can not only direct work, but we can monitor it, we can evaluate it, and we can make sure that it's been done, not only being done, but being done to the standard that we need. So we will need to find new and different ways to build up that trust and confidence. Um, and, I, uh, and, uh, and I think that will happen. However, I don't think us all working at home and in isolation forever um, is the answer because we are inherently social animals and we inherently, to a to, to greater or lesser extent, um, but we actually like company and we like being, um, having our coffee or having our socials or chatting to a colleague to solve a problem. Um, so we will need to find, I think, different ways in which we come together um, when we're allowed to and when it's safe to do so. So I think the shape of work, um, I think the shape of uh, commercial office space is going to change um, as less people need desks to sit at. Thank you. I think that's a very good answer. Um, I'm going to bring Scott in now. We've got a couple of other questions, but hopefully we will have time to look at them before you have to leave, Marjorie. Scott, if I could bring you in now.
Sorry, Scott, I think you're still on mute. Can you unmute? Yeah, sorry, that's me. <laughs> I thought you had the power. <laughs> I think um, Heather has the power. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Jane. Um, yeah, no, brilliant. Um, and thanks, guys, for, for everyone who's, who's listening today. And thanks for, um, for the guys for having me on. Um, some really good advice, I think, from Stu and Marjorie. So I just want to probably add a little bit to that. Um, just a very brief outline of, of who I am. So my name is Scott Newby, um, and I run a company called Newby Core Consulting. Uh, where we specialize in in culture we specialize in mental health at work and, and varieties of different training and sort of leadership development and coaching um which is where my kind of passion lies um it's really interesting this whole kind of uh f forced upon us kind of change of working practices uh, and i'll just share a bit of my own experience because a bit like Stu, i've kind of already made some of that kind of transition uh, but even so kind of getting more used to it in this in these strange times so um, I started the company two and a half years ago. Um, previous to that, I worked in, in financial services and uh, ran a, in my last role there, I was a, a senior manager running an operation of about 150 people um, in an office of about 600, um, which I, and a bit like what Stuart said, I'm very, I'm very sociable, very outgoing. And the transition from that to basically setting up my own company on my own initially uh, was very, very strange in some ways. Um, I've got young children, so that absolutely the benefits of that and having more time, more flexibility was, was brilliant. Um, but I think it doesn't happen overnight. Is what it does take a bit of time to get used to that, not having the office banter, not have it in the same way that we maybe did previously. Um, and having those face-to-face -face conversations obviously can be really valuable. So it does take a bit of time. So don't you know, beat yourself up if you, if you have good days and bad days and if it's something that's new to you, you know, be kind to yourself on that. Um, and what I would say is, you know, someone who's a huge advocate for the importance of mental health. And as Marjorie said there, you know, we are social animals and there's nothing, you know, we are built to need human connection face to face. That is how we are built as human beings. Um, and, you know, technology, social media, there is good and bad. I think we know that in terms of uh, what, how they can be used. And I think now is the time more than ever that technology needs to be a force for good. We need to think of the positives and we need to use it for the positives to stay connected keeping motivating each other keep supporting each other um and try and stick to the positives and try and ignore all the kind of negativity that we may see um so i'm gonna based on that i'm gonna look at um what i'm gonna do, look at three things that we can all do to support others and i'm aware there's a, a range of different people on the on the call so um some of that will be maybe managers supporting colleagues that they that work for them but it also could be colleagues supporting other colleagues as well it really can be be anything at all and then i'll briefly after that look at ways we can um things we can do to look after ourselves in these and our own mental health in these um uncertain times you know there are millions of different things we could do and you've probably all seen millions of different things out there you know and all the usual stuff around exercise and drinking water and getting a good night's sleep and diet are obviously very relevant but i've picked out three kind of main areas which for each part of it which i think are, are really valuable so first of all guys are kind of touched on this already communication stay connected this is really really important um, you can't have too much of it. So lots and lots of it, I think, is, is the key thing. It's easy to probably to go a few days without connecting with people, um, what's going on. I always think to myself, if you're going to communicate something, ask yourself the question, what would you do if you were doing this face-to-face? -face? How would you communicate if you could do it face-to-face? -face? Would you do it face-to-face -face or would you send an email? And if the answer is you would do it, say it was a difficult conversation you need to have with a colleague, would you send an email in inverted commas, normal circumstances? Or would you do it face to face? If you would do it face to face, then pick up the phone, do a Zoom call, do a video call. You know, don't we use technology to communicate in the way we would if we didn't have to use technology, if that makes sense. Um, and that may be, you know, things like less email, more video conferences, more telecom, more Zoom. Um, and I think what's really, really important around communication is as well, uh, from a work perspective, is, um, and this is from speaking to a few of our clients and a few different um, colleagues that we know is that in these uncertain times, we're excellent at communicating in group environments and having lots of group meetings, which is really, really important, which I think is great. But don't forget about the one-to-one -one conversations because that's really, really key, particularly if you've got people in your team because people won't always share what they need to share within a, a group environment. So don't, don't forget about picking up the phone and having a chat with people one-to-one. -one. This is on a, a strange time and everybody will be dealing with it differently. 
everybody, some people will find it very straightforward to get into the habit of it. Some people will find it very difficult. People will struggle with anxiety around everything that's going on. So don't be afraid to speak to people one-to-one. -one. I think that's really, really important as well as the kind of group conversations. And think about work practice, think simple things. If you do like to send emails quite a lot, that's fine. But in this work time that we have, it's very easy to, and I think Stu touched on the importance of routine and I'll touch on that as well later on, you know, that the, the whole day doesn't merge into one. So then you might say, well, actually, I'm not going to do anything, but I'll send loads of emails to my team at 11 o'clock at night. Now, all that's going to happen is guys in your team are going to log on in the morning and they're going to have 20 emails from you. And that is not a nice way to start the day. So already that's going to impact their motivation uh, or they maybe check them on their phone at 11 at night. So think about what might be good for you, might not be good for your team. You know, um, and I speak from experience from a, from a not working remotely that I used to have a manager. He was a brilliant manager, by the way, a long time ago, but he had young kids and that's what he would do. Half nine to 11, he would catch up on his emails. But as, as his team, we had to say to him, we'd all come in and have 20 emails, lots of them action emails at eight o'clock in the morning. So before your days even began. So it just kind of, just think about that, particularly in these times where time becomes a little bit kind of blurred. Um, be open and honest. You know, people, give people more credit than maybe sometimes we do. We all know it's difficult times. We know, as Marjorie was talking about, that difficult decisions sadly are going to have to be made. Um, even if it's bad news or a difficult conversation, don't, you know, brush around the edges. Be open and honest. Do it, do it as much as you can verbally um, as possible. And at last on the kind of connect communication pieces, help each other. We can all help each other. And I think it was really interesting, Stu, talking about you know, the, the banter and the fun from the kind of WhatsApp groups and, and so on has never been better, to be honest, which is a nice little positive in these times. But really simple thing we have, I, I, I run a men's football team as well, um, away from my kind of day job. Um, we're all missing not having that regular interaction through training and, and lots of fun in the dressing room and all that. Um, but something simple, we set up a Strava, for anyone doing a Strava, you know, a, a kind of app to kind of measure your kind of exercise you're doing. We set up a, a Strava group. And everyone just posts in there each day when they've done a run or gone for a you know, cycle, whatever it is. And again, it just it adds a little bit of competition, friendly, but it also keeps a bit of motivation. Um, I've got time for once in my life. Um, so I've actually done more exercise than I ever have in the last week. Um, but that helps me keep motivated. So, and obviously exercise is good for our mental health. So you know, don't, there is creative ways we can do that to, to kind of keep in touch with each other. Um, so communication, absolutely number one. Um, Secondly, training and development. I think what's really important is when we come into a period of crisis, we often forget about the need to still, not necessarily hugely financially, not even financially sometimes, but to invest in our people, you know, invest in their motivation, in their support, in their learning. There's lots and lots of really good learning materials out there right now. There's lots of opportunities. Some people will be really busy right now. Some people will be quieter. But I think often one of the things we miss in a point of crisis is actually, this is probably the time more than ever that we need to train and develop and educate our individuals. Uh, and a very, very brief story I'll share is, um, again, when I was in financial services, um, I'm going to go from the C word to the B word very, very briefly, which I apologize for. But when the, it was a financial service where everything was linked to the stock market, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and the day that the Brexit vote, the vote for Brexit happened, um, our powers that be, much, much more senior than I did, was decided that all learning all training all that was all pulled all cancelled firefighting you know supporting our customers and our clients around what's this going to mean to their pensions and so on all that told from day one in a point of crisis where you needed your staff to be behind it and motivated was that completely demotivated everyone and had the opposite effect so really being this is no you know, this is a time not necessarily today but over the next weeks and months this is a time to invest in your people and offer training um, whether that's whatever that may be, it could be anything at all. It could be, and it, if it's met, there is a lot of good mental health online training out there as well, something that we offer. So there is stuff there as well, which can keep people motivated and still educated in these, these difficult times. Um, and lastly, on the, the way to help others is to look after yourself. If you don't look after yourself, how can you help your teammates? How can you help the colleagues that work for you? Um, it's a bit like the, the swan, isn't it? You know, you might be calm on top, but the legs are kind of going crazy underneath the water. It's a bit like that. And it's, I think, yeah, in points of crisis, we need to, as particularly managers, you need to keep an element of calm and control on the outside. Um, but it's okay to be a bit vulnerable. These are times that no one has had before. There is no playbook, as Stu was saying. So actually, you know, it's okay to be a little bit vulnerable. It's okay to say to your team, I don't know all the answers right now, um, rather than kind of bluff it. 
um, and be kind to yourself. You know, I've, what, in the last two weeks, I've probably been through every range of emotions possible. You have good days where you feel really motivated. You have other days where you, you can barely be bothered doing any work. So that will happen. So be kind to yourself. If you have a bad day, be kind to yourself. Um, the best way to support others is to stay healthy yourself, you know, and ask people for help. There's lots of people out there keep asking for support as well. So that's kind of ways I think we can help other people. In terms of a few things quickly, just to how we can help ourselves. Um, again, I'm going to focus on a routine, as, uh, as Stu said. Um, it's amazing how getting showered and dressed can actually help you, <laughs> uh, which is funny. I've actually made myself a little bit of a, a weird kind of rule that I, uh, I won't, the first thing I do when I get out of bed is go for a shower. So, and, and that wouldn't be something I'd always do previously. You know, I might go down and get coffee first, have breakfast with the kids, then go and get showered. Now it is first thing I do because I think otherwise the temptation is ah, just throw my shorts on, I'll get showered later on. Get showered, get dressed. I'm not saying get dressed in a suit and tie. That's not what I dress on anyway. This is the first time I think I've wore a shirt for about a week and a half. It's normally just joggies and stuff. I've still got my shorts on as well. But, you know, it's, it's about getting up showered, dressed, get yourself motivated, maybe do a bit better. If you do exercise in your normal routine, keep doing it. If you have holidays booked in, you know, for Easter, still take your holidays as normal. Try and separate your life as much as possible. Try and do your normal hours and control what you can control. What can we control? We can't control everything that's going on there right now in the world. There's certain things we cannot control. So try and focus on what we can control in our own little world, whether that's our family, whether that's our work environment, our colleagues, our friends, and how we can do that as part of our routine. And I find that doing that first thing in the morning, keeping that routine does get you motivated and kind of ready for the day. Um, otherwise, every day becomes a bit like a Sunday and you kind of, <laughs> the temptation is to you know, sit and do nothing and maybe have a first drink at three in the afternoon or something. <laughs> so it's really important, I think, to maintain that kind of routine. Secondly, compartmentalize. Um, not very easy to do. And this is like separating different parts of your life. So not easy to do if you're like many of us, I'm sure, myself included. We've now got two young kids at home, uh, me and my wife, and we have to become all of a sudden become school teachers. Um, as well as uh, employees and parents. So not easy to do, um, absolutely. Uh, again, quite fortunate because we do spend a bit of time working from home anyway. We have got an office set up in the house, which I'm sitting in at the moment. So we do have that. Um, but what's very important, I think, is to try and compartmentalize. And this is something I learned in that journey, as I said, going from a large, working for a large team to being an individual sort of company was if I'm sitting at the kitchen table on my laptop doing work whilst trying to help the kids whilst probably trying to do something else. Actually, all I do is I do them all badly. And I might end up saying to the kids, oh, in a minute, in a minute. And actually, then you just feel guilty and, and nothing really happens. So as much as possible, I try to say, right, for these two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever, I'm going to go to the office and I'm going to work. And then I might say, right, for these next two hours, I'm going to sit and I'm going to do school with the kids. Or I'm going to sit, I'm going to play with the kids, you know, um, make some Lego, whatever it may be. So kind of doing by separating, I'm now going to sit and have dinner as a family. So whereas in the past, I might be having breakfast in the morning um, with the kids getting ready for school, but I might still be answering emails on my phone, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas now I'll say, do you know what? No, this is breakfast time. I'm going to sit and have breakfast with the kids. And actually after that, then I'm going to, so almost just doing one thing at a time rather than trying to do everything. And, and that's something I learned from previously because I felt, I probably felt quite a lot of guilt in the past because I'd go to bed and think I wasn't very good at helping the kids, but because I was trying to work but they don't know. They don't care if you're on your laptop sitting next to them, you know, so it's really important to try and separate. I know it's not easy where at this point in time when everyone's at home all the time. Um, and learn, learn, you know, learn from your own experiences. You know, you, one day you might do something that works well for you. The next day it might not. So keep, things will keep evolving. Keep learning from what works and what doesn't work for you. We're all different. There isn't any uh, silver bullet for any of this. We're all different and now what works for us. And last but not least, um, find the positive. Okay. So, I guess the question I always ask myself is, what's the alternative? Um, and I do find myself very cautious about talking about the positives. I'm a very positive person, I think. But, you know, in a time where people are losing their lives and businesses are, you know, struggling and people are losing their jobs and that, it is obviously very, very difficult times. But where we can, let's find a bit of positivity. You know, these are, maybe this is an opportunity for us all to reflect a little bit. Maybe we we'll slow down a bit more. I think as Stu rightly touched, absolutely you know, putting that, putting the family first, maybe that's an opportunity to spend, you know, yes, it's difficult trying to work with the children around, but actually this is time with the children that you'll never regret. I think you'll look back on this in a few years time and think how much time you had with the children. Um, things would slow down a little bit and see the opportunity. If you've had a, 
if there's something you want to learn, you know, an online course or an instrument, learn a language of something you've always wanted to do, but never had the time, you know, maybe now's the time to do it because you've got that time. So I think really think and focus on the positive. I think what's really important is um, whilst focus on the positive, do a bit of housekeeping as well around all your social media channels. So you kind of remove some of the negativity. It's really important. We all keep uh, in tune and up to date with what's going on in the world. But there's quite a lot of half truths out there. There's quite a lot of negativity, obviously. Um, and I think that can obviously, when we're in this kind of period of isolation, that can really kind of chip away at us. So I think it's really important that you kind of do that bit of housekeeping that you keep the kind of, I think the Stuart saying, you know, your WhatsApp chats, your social media, that it's fun, it's interesting. If it is uh, news that it's relevant and correct, but then actually it's a bit of fun and try and remove some of the negativity in this time where that won't be much help for us. And share the positivity. If you're doing things that are positive, if, if there's things that are positive, um, you've seen a movie that was really positive and helped you, you know, share things for other people, help share that positivity. Um, and then I'm sure the, the good positivity will come back as well. Kind of that, that good karma, uh, if you like. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of three things I think and there's loads of things to do. That's just kind of three areas of kind of, for me, I think have worked really well in the past for myself and, um, hopefully will will help other people in terms of kind of navigate their way through these kind of these new times. Well, thank you very much. I think there's some brilliant suggestions and tips and advice there, particularly around staying connected. And I've started to hear, I'm not sure I like it, but I've started to hear um, instead of social distancing, distance socialising being used quite a lot. And I think even if the phrase might be a bit on the cheesy side, the, the principle is a really good one. And staying connected and, and being kind to yourself, um, hugely important. We've got some questions in. So before we lose Marjorie, I'd like to take these in reverse order actually. Firstly, are there any rules or restrictions on contacting our team if they are furloughed? Yes, so the principle of furlough means that there is no work for you to do and your employment is suspended. So um, you, you, you can't contact your employee to give them work or about work matters. But the thing, but it is important to stay engaged with your employees. So you may give them the choice, for example, to uh, to dial in to say you're having a, a social coffee or a, a a Friday afternoon get together, just so that they can stay engaged with their with their colleagues. So you're not asking them to do any any work, but you may reach out and say, "Here's an opportunity for you to dial in." Um, there hasn't been any kind of restrictions or any conditions around that, but I'm just really thinking that in terms of, you know, perhaps good practice and, and, and to, um, one of the, the points that Scott made in around communication and connection um, and the point that you still do ha have a, sort of, a bit of a duty of care to make sure that your employees are all right. So I think reaching out and agreeing how best to, to connect with your furloughed employees, if it's possible. You need to remember that you may have quite a lot of furloughed employees. Um, so it is also what is practical, I think. Um, but try not to forget them because at some point they're going to come back into your business, one hopes, and that you want to have that connection. You want them to know that when they come back to work for you, they're still engaged with you and that they are wanting to work positively with you so they are a resource that you want to think about and to um, think about how best to keep them engaged albeit that they're not at the front line. There's a sort of second part to that one as well Marjorie and then some that will open up to the, the rest of the panel uh, and uh, again feel free to, to comment on these ones as well. When the employees are furloughed does the employer still have a responsibility to support their mental health and well-being as well. So they still have a, a contract of employment. They still are your employee, and you still have all those employment. Um, but you, it, it's one of these questions that there is no definitive answer. You know, this is this is not a this is not a, an, an answer, a, a rule book that answers that question. Um, I think you wouldn't want it to be doing anything that puts their mental health to their detriment um, and I think it is something that you need to think about how you could as I said earlier how you could carry on to engage them. Uh, 
It's, di it's difficult to think of uh, a specific example in terms of that, but you do have a responsibility and you won't be wanting to put anybody's mental health at any detriment through the actions that you were taken. I think, I think that's the best I can answer that question. Thank you. Uh, one one for, for everybody on the panel as well. Um, we have questions around how an employer can make sure they offer the right support to employees who might be struggling, um, particularly if the employees aren't reaching out and asking for that support, um, and whether there's anything that we as employers should look for, um, perhaps as, as signs that employees may be struggling. Can I answer that just because I'll need to leave just after this question. Uh, firstly, I think when you are in Teams meetings or um, uh, actually just gauging how well people are engaging uh, and answering, um, making the point that um, Scott made about having one-to-ones um, in whatever format you can, where you can uh, have a sense of how well people are doing. I mean, I, I found on Monday actually that coming out of the weekend was probably the hardest thing that people were finding because normally the weekend's the time for socialising and that wasn't that wasn't there. You will be able to see telltale signs with people that you that you know. Um, and lastly, as I mentioned earlier, in a, in a more formal kind of way, there are some diagnostic tools that you could use um, to help people to self-assess and perhaps then to be able to open up a conversation around that self-assessment. Okay, I'm going to have to go now, but uh, thanks very much for having me and I hope the rest of your um, webinar goes well. Thank you me? very much, Marjorie. All right, really appreciate care. that. All right, bye-bye. Love you your next one. Thanks, Marjorie. So can I just expand on that, Jane? Because we, yes, you know, we, we obviously have quite an interesting culture here, here at Just Eat. And um, even in my interview process to join, my, my interview with HR, it was almost all around culturally how I would help people who were struggling at any point in time. And they, they were very big on that. And, and not just obviously people I would be managing, but, but my own health and mental health. And it, it, I, I knew from then that the company was very invested in in the mental health of its, its employees um, on a one-to-one on a -one level. So we've talked quite a bit about oversharing and communication, which is you know super key at, at this point in time. The one-to-ones we all have in the business, I mean, I, the one-to-ones I have with my team, I don't, we're not actually talking about work stack. You know, it, it's about how are you getting on? Is everything, is everything okay? And some people are happy sharing and, and, and others maybe less so, and we don't need to know the facets of our personal lives. But because we have this oversharing culture and people really trust each other, I tend to find people are quite open about things so if they're having a bad day or um especially at the moment where you know we are having these kind of i hate to use the word peak but you know these up up, up and down days um but we're very good at sharing that so albeit some people won't, won't want to open up about mental health struggles um it's a little easier to find when people are having a bit of a tough time but but again that's that's a cultural thing that's been embedded over a, a reasonable period of time um we use a, we're actually using a weekly um uh, feedback, so, uh, Glint, I think it's called, where because everybody's working from home and that's new for a lot of people, um, there's a weekly feedback, uh, anonymous feedback, which is going to the leadership around how comfortable people are at this point in time. So hopefully that'll gather some data as we go on about how, how things are moving. Um, um, there's, a, there's a bot we use on Slack as well. I know we can't always find um, technical ways. There was a question there around kind of how do you replicate that kind of water cooler thing or the you know bumping into somebody for cups of tea in the office i mean fundamentally you just can't replicate that that fully but we use things like slack bots there's one where it will randomly assign you a member of staff and you you have a coffee with them um so there's a few funky little tech things that you can use to try and overcome some of those those issues and i uh, just uh, to be it mind jane i've just got something to add as yep. well i just think just i think the, the key thing is and whether it's kind of whether it's face to face, whether it's you know remotely, whatever it may be, the key thing we talk about in terms of someone's mental health and how we can be aware of how someone is, is doing is that just very simply a change in a behavior in their behavior that is from the norm for them for them. So as Stu rightly said, you know, we're already all very different. And we, and, and by the more we communicate and the more we interact with people, the more we know them, the more we build trust and respect, then actually the more we can recognize when something's not quite right. So, you know, if we don't, if we only speak to someone once every month by email, then we're not going to recognize it. So the more communication we have, the more we build up that trust. And what we're looking for, what you're always looking for is that having that awareness of a change in behavior. So someone who's very vocal in meetings, 
and very confident is all of a sudden very quiet, you know, or vice versa. It could be somebody who's very quiet, is almost very erratic and very kind of, you know, maybe not the normal self. It could be if you're doing Zoom calls, it could be a change in appearance over a couple of weeks, maybe not just maybe once, but over two or three times. So it's any sort of change in behavior, um, whether that's face to face or whether that's remotely, that you think actually maybe that's a bit of a trigger. That some, maybe someone is struggling a little bit, then that's a great time to pick up the phone to them and say, just want to check in. How's everything going? You know, are you doing all right? Um, if that kind of, that's how I always kind of look at it. Yeah. And I think Scott, you made a really good point about kind of fallibility and vulnerability and, and, and yeah, in leadership positions, you know, you're there to show that leadership, but at the same time, we're all human and we're all kind of maneuvering our way through this. And, and again, because we're quite a flat structured business in that sense, I can have those open conversations with the team that, Hey, I'm not having a good day either. So, and then that yeah. just encourages more of that openness and, and you get to then see when people are maybe not having such a good time. No, absolutely. Yeah. Great point. I think hugely good points actually from both of you. I'm going to take some of this away and make sure that we practice it as well. We've got one, I think that both of you would be able to answer. And, and if MD held the noises from, from my house, I can probably help with this one too, having three children at home now. Um, but somebody said they normally like working from home, but dealing with home school interruptions and also looking after the mental and emotional well-being and health of the children is a big additional stress. Um, have you got tips on handling that? Um, <laughs> yes, kinda. Yeah, that's probably, probably the biggest challenge that many of us are facing right now, I think. Um, I think, first of all, I would say I'm, I'm very fortunate that um, my wife and I, we both um, are directors with the company. So we both uh, are both around, which does make it easier, obviously, because one of us can do some work while the other one does the, the homeschooling. So I, I, I get we're really fortunate not everyone's in that scenario. But I think going back to, to, to Stu's point at the beginning, don't beat yourself up about it. If you can, you know, if, if there's what's your priorities and actually right now, the priority for me is family and children. Yes, obviously work and employees are absolutely really important, but you know, ch children, particularly if they're younger children, they they'll have an awareness of the kind of general thing that's going on. You know, it's not normal for them not to go to school or not normal to see their friends and stuff, but they won't know that you've still got work to do and how important it is. You know, they don't, what they want to do is they just want your time. You're there. So they want to speak to you, want to ask you questions. Um, and it's almost kind of just focusing on the positives around that. I think going to, in terms of when we do need to get work done, I think that whole compartmentalized thing, I think is really important is try and split your day out into, even as I think Stu said, it doesn't have to be, right, I'm going to work nine to five. It could be right for this next 45 minutes, I'm going to sit down and focus on work for five minutes while the children are away doing a, a school task or wherever it may be. And then later on, then I'll, you know, rather than like short spurts, maybe, because if you try to say to the children, right, I'm going to be working nine to five don't don't bother me that's probably unlikely so i think maybe even breaking it down into small chunks um yeah i think that's that's for me that's the, the kind of almost embrace it embrace it and that, that for me the one thing i don't want to do in, in six months time is look back and say i wish i'd spent more time with the children when i had that opportunity to to do that and you know ultimately that's that's as parents that's for me that's our key focus yeah, I totally agree with that. I think that plays into the, you know, if we if we can look after our mental health by, you know, spending more time with the family longer term, that'll actually help our careers and the companies that we work for. Um, when that question came in, I, I was trying to think of a reasonable answer. I'm, I'm very loath as a parent to try and give advice to any other parents because everybody's different and um, it can be wild at times, can't it? But um, yeah, I think the not feeling guilty thing is, is a great point. Um, if sometimes you need to chuck the kids in front of the telly, that's what you need to do. If that, if that gets you to maneuver through that hour where you need to get something done or, you know, you've got to go and get the shopping or 101 other things, I think it's just getting over. This won't be forever. Um, you know, we'll get back to some normality eventually, whatever, whatever that, that looks like. Um, and, and it's kind of okay to, to do whatever you, you feel. I mean, yeah, for, for me at the moment, we're trying to have a bit of a routine with well, my, my kids aren't at school, just a play group. But, you know, we do the little nine o'clock exercise PE class and, uh, you know, the little one's ballet class has moved to a Saturday morning online and, and, and just trying to make the day uh, as best you can, similar to what it was before without uh, upsetting them or upsetting yourself a bit too much. We've, we've got uh, another interesting, well, we've got another couple, but one particularly, I think, it'd be good to get some, some hints and tips on. Um, somebody has said they're particularly concerned about their younger employees who are really used to socialising, you know, being out. I'm sure we all remember, remember those days. Um, 
but who are now in flats with people who may be furloughed or may have lost their jobs because of the current situation um, and can't go home to see family, so are probably really at risk of social isolation in a different way. Or have you got any suggestions for tips for them apart from the usual chat groups? Um, I think I think for young people, um, it's a it's a bit of a it's a it's a funny one, isn't it? Because I think for young people, in, in one respect, they are very in tune with technology and and all the different groups and means and ways of keeping in touch via technology. Um, I think you know that sometimes can be in normal in normal life can be at the detriment to their mental health sometimes because maybe the some young people don't naturally socialise maybe as much as some of the. Uh, some of maybe the older generations are very careful what words I use there. I put myself in the older generation just to be clear. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, um, it's not easy. It's not easy. If you're used to socialising, if you're used to going out and playing football with your friends or going to you know, sports classes or go to the pub or it's, there's no, there's no silver bullet. I mean, we're all, whether someone's been filled or not, we're all, unless we're key workers, you know, we're all pretty much kind of isolated in our house and, you know, and it might be with flatmates that you maybe don't get on with that well. So it can be really, really difficult. I think it's just, for me, it's not, it's about being creative. It's about using the technology for good. So, for example, I think maybe Stu touched on as well. Last Friday, um, me and five of our, my wife and five of our closest kind of friends, we all did a, a five groups of friends. So we all did um, a pub quiz on through Zoom, and it was a good laugh. It wasn't quite the same, but we all had a drink and we're all chatting and laughing, and it kind of felt at the end of it you'd had a night out. And actually, ironically, we've all got young children. We probably don't very, very rarely do we manage to find a date where we all do that anyway. Um, and one of our friends actually lives in Stockholm with his wife at the minute. And we never, do, but he was in as well. So actually we're thinking we'll probably do, I'm massively into, you know, I don't want the new norm to be that we don't do stuff face to time because I think that's so valuable. But actually, I think some of this stuff now we might do as well, you know, friends that live in different parts of the world and stuff. So I think it is about being creative. Um, there's a couple of uh, a couple of good things actually I noticed. There was a if you're trying to kind of use your time wisely, there's something called classcentral.com, which has got loads and loads of free kind of learnings and stuff on. So you can use your time maybe to learn a new skill, you know, lots of free stuff in there. And the guys at um, Tree of Knowledge, then if some of you might be aware of that as well, I'd recommend anyone to kind of who's looking for a bit of positivity and a few ideas and keeping their kind of chin up and in these strange times. And they're, they're great guys to follow as well on social media. But it's about being creative. We can't, again, it comes back to the control, what you can control. Really sadly, we can't, you know, I'd love to go out and play football with my friends like now, but you can't. So actually, what can you, what can you do to replicate some of this as much as possible? Yeah, I mean, totally agree. And, and I think some of the, as great as this chat has been, and, and it has been, been wonderful that there are fundamentally just some questions that are very difficult to answer because this is new for everybody, regardless of age or circumstance or, or children or whatever, um, whatever that might be. So, um, I think we're all just trying to find our way through it. I, I think the communication piece is obviously key, no matter what your age or circumstances are. You, you, you should be able to chat to people who are going through the same thing uh, and they're, they've got some ideas, maybe some things that are working or some things that aren't. And I think just and using the tech to do that is probably the best way to do it. But in terms of practical advice, very difficult to do because this is this is unprecedented for our generation. So um, I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll learn a hell of a lot out of it, uh, certainly uh, when, when it's all done and dusted. Um, hopefully a lot of it will be for, for the better. Um, but yeah, difficult to offer meaningful advice for some of those things. And I think at the end of it, we might actually all be better at kind of doing the kind of face-to-face socializing again because maybe we've start to maybe be a good thing for us in terms of we'll start to appreciate how much we've all missed it and how much we all yeah, need absolutely. it and maybe our lives are always so busy or we maybe cancel some of our social kind of engagements whereas actually maybe we'll make more of an effort um first down the line hopefully yep it leads us into the the final question which i think is actually a really interesting one um somebody said that they work in a really large office and often bump into colleagues they don't know at the coffee machine um, or in shared work areas and how can they how can they keep that sort of interaction going it's not virtual tea breaks or coffee breaks with their own team it's that wider piece i think just if if i can offer one suggestion i think we and a number of other organizations are running open office sessions um, we're doing it once a week we open up zoom 
we have one of the team available on Zoom and people just come along and we chat. I mean, it's, it's not specifically work related. Um, any topic is welcome and that we've only done one so far. We've got another one this week, but that is working quite well. And we had people join that aren't members of Scotland is. Um, do you have any other suggestions for that sort of interaction? I think I think for me that is the mechanism to, to to do these things at the moment. And again, we're doing similar internally here, and having just those open Google Hangouts where you just come in and chat about anything, or or you know what was on TV last night, whatever it might be, um, not necessarily work related. I, I think outside of that, given that we're unable to to congregate in the way that we could before, that there aren't too many other ways to to do that. I think just to add to just probably from a looking at it from a slightly different angle for very if it's for anyone who's on the call you know from this kind of smaller side of the, the businesses uh, obviously my, which i include myself in um where we maybe i spend a lot of my work interaction either based with clients or having coffees you know going into places and you know I'm always meeting people for coffees whether it's to catch up with anything and everything or whether it's work related or whether it's potential client whatever it may be um and actually that's very difficult because that's you can't replicate that in the same way as such but what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, actually, I'm going to keep in touch with and actually maybe reach out to people that I've maybe had a coffee with six months ago or connected with on LinkedIn and, and reach out to them to have a chat and just kind of keep that connection alive because um, that's what I would normally be doing face to face. So it's, it's trying to keep that where well, you maybe not have a, a huge team as such to do that, but just you know, keep in touch with the people that maybe you normally would do as part of your wider network. Thank you, Stu and Scott. Um, I think we've covered some really good ground today and some really important points. I think particularly around staying connected, um, communication being absolutely critical, being kind to ourselves and those we work with, and then really accepting that this is a really uncertain time and that it's not within our control. And as the panelists said, control what we are able to. And look for the light at the end of the tunnel. We will come out of the other side of this and hopefully we'll have come out having learned a lot um, with some tips and suggestions that we can take on into everyday life. We will certainly all be looking forward to the first time we can go out for dinner or go out and meet friends somewhere that's not in our house. If I could just thank all of the panellists again, Stu, Scott and Marjorie, you had to leave us a little bit early. We really appreciate your time today and your expertise. If we have any other questions come in, we will pass them on to you and we will circulate information afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers.